Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we're going to talk about Commodore 128 Banking, um, how memory banking works. Um, the books I've got on the 128 all put it a little differently. They have a little bit different pictures and descriptions. If you put them all together, I think you get a pretty good picture of it. But I thought I'd try to uh, simplify it here a little bit and just walk through how it works. Uh, the word bank, we kind of overuse. We use it to mean a few different things, which I think it can add to the confusion. Um, sometimes we, we talk about a bank meaning a, a, a bank of RAM, like a 64K section of RAM, which the 128 has two of. But other times we use it to mean a memory configuration, um, where you have different pieces of d different chips what banked in. Um, and act basically activated. And so we use the word a couple different ways. Um, in basic, there's a bank command, which you can give a number from 0 to uh, 15. Um, the ones that matter are 0, 1, 14, and 15. And those set up particular memory configurations. So sometimes we're talking in those terms of setting up a particular configuration of memory other times we're talking about an actual physical um, selection of chips that go together to form a bank. So I'll try to be clear about which one I mean as we do this. So this is a layout of the memory in the Commodore 128, everything that, that matters, basically. Um, I tend to look at it like this in layers. I think it helps to understand what's going on. At the bottom, you have a layer that's 64K of RAM. Now the 128 has twice that much, but because it's a, because it has a 16-bit addressing bus, you can only address 64K of RAM at a time. So that's where we talk about RAM banks, where you can have RAM bank 0 or RAM bank 1. They're just two different selections of 64K of RAM that can be either switched in or... The, Basically, you always have one or the other. You always have 64K of RAM in place in this bottom layer. It's just a question of, is it going to be bank zero or bank one of RAM? Okay, so that's on the bottom, the bottom layer. Above that, you have these ROMs. Okay, and by the way, we're going from address 0000 up to FFFF here on the left. So... You have these ROMs then. You have one called Basic ROM Low that goes from 4,000 up to 8,000. That's part of Basic. And then you have another Basic ROM called Basic ROM High that goes from 8,000 to C1,000. So those two together form Basic, which is the Basic interpreter, um, all the routines you need to run a Basic program. Then you have Kernel ROM, which starts at C1,000, goes up to the top at FFFF. And in the middle of it here, or kind of the middle, from D1000 to E1000 is character ROM. So character ROM is sort of the font definitions for the text characters. Um, when you put a, like if you put a one in screen memory, that means, draw one, that means A. And so then the VIC chip, when it goes to display that, it goes into character ROM to see, okay, how do I make an A on the screen? And it gets eight bytes, which by then turning on the bits it forms you know it forms an a however however the the bits are laid out but that's how it knows how to draw an a it gets that information from character rom and the vic has its own bus to character rom so it can always read from character rom um, you can also tell the vic to get that information from somewhere else but the point is you don't have to, character ROM doesn't have to be available to the processor for it to be available to the VIC. It's always available to the VIC because it has its own sort of backdoor into it. But on either side of that then is kernel routines, and Commodore did spell it with an A for whatever reason. Um, on either side of that then, from C1000 to D1000, and then from E1000 on up to the top, you have kernel routines to do things like um, talk to the drives and talk to... Um, check the keyboard and send it, send data to the screen, all that kind of stuff. That's all your kernel routines there. So that's a layer of ROM that sits on top of RAM. Then right here, you have another layer on top of that, 
which is the I.O. block. And it goes from D1000 to DFFF. And the I.O. block is basically an assortment of all the registers that run all your different I.O. chips. So like your sound chip, your video chips, your um, I.O. chips for talking to a modem or the joysticks or the keyboard, all, um, all that kind of stuff is in the I.O. block. So this is read and write depending on what registers you're talking to. So this is how I think of it in these layers. And the, the thing about this is ROM is read only memory. RAM is read and write, uh, random access memory. So if you write to a location, like if I do a store A into 9000, if this ROM is on, if it's activated, you can't write into ROM. And so that write just goes right through it and it writes down here in the RAM. But if I load A from 9000, then it matters whether this ROM is turned on because if it's on, it's just going to read right back out of that ROM. So you're not going to get the value you stored down here. You would have to turn this ROM off and then you would get the value from down here. So that's why I talk about it in layers because if you take, if you take this layer away, then you're talking directly to the RAM, reading and writing to the RAM. But if this layer is turned on, then your reads come from the ROM. Your writes still go through the RAM still go through to the RAM, but your reads come from the ROM. So you have to be able to turn these things on and off. Otherwise, you can't read from any of this RAM underneath the ROMs. So how do we do that? Well, that's where the MMU configuration register comes in. Um, and that's what's kind of unique to the Commodore 128, at least compared to the other, you know, the Commodore 64 and the others is that it has an MMU, a memory management unit, which does this stuff. And the configuration register sits at FF00, so it sits right in here somewhere. And that is always available, no matter what is what else is switched on or off, because you've got to be able to get at that to change these things. So it's got to always be available there. And... So it sits at FF00 and it has eight bits. And so we're going to talk about what those bits do in a little bit. First, I'll talk about the bank command in basic because it's simple. Um, what zero does is just gives you the RAM. It, it, it turns off all this stuff, turns off every, all the ROMs and the IO block so that all you're talking to is the, is the RAM layer. What one does is does the same thing, turns all this stuff off but the RAM layer it gives you is the other RAM layer, the bank, what we call bank one, the other layer of RAM because of the 128 having two 64K layers. That's one is you're just talking to the other one. Um, 15 is the default bank. It's the one that it's in when you turn the machine on and it has everything turned on. It has the, the first, it has the first RAM layer, layer zero. Maybe if I call it layer instead of bank, it makes more sense. But it has layer zero of RAM, and then it has all these things turned on. So it has basic, so you can write basic programs. It has the kernel, so it's ready to read from disk and stuff. And it has the I.O. block, so everything's ready to talk to the outside. 14 is the same as 15, except that the I.O. block is turned off. And that's the one you use then if you need to read from character ROM. Um, the main reason you would do that is if you need to, if you want to design your own characters, you can turn off the I.O. block, copy the character definitions from character ROM to somewhere else in RAM, and then make whatever changes you want to, whichever characters you want to change, point the VIC chip there for its character information, and then turn the I.O. block back on and go back to doing your work. So 14 is basically one you use just temporarily when you need to read directly from character ROM, with you, when your program needs to read directly from it. Like I said, the VIC chip can always read from it because it's got its own separate access. So those are the four banks that actually matter in BASIC as far as the, the ones that count. Um, the ones in between from 2 to 13, you would basically never use them, and you'll see why in a little bit. But that's if you're writing a basic program. When you're writing an assembly language, you don't have the bank command. You have to deal with the MMU configuration register yourself. So 
the way it works is it's got eight bits. Um, the first three pairs here kind of work as pairs, so we'll go through them one at a time. The first pair controls the RAM. It just it just decides which which layer of RAM is in place. Is it layer zero or layer one that's in place here that's active? And the reason we use two bits for that is it was actually designed that potentially it could have four layers. And so you needed two bits to decide between four layers. Now the 128 never had more than two layers. Um, they didn't end up making like a Commodore 256. So bit seven never matters. It's just irrelevant. We'll just leave it at zero, but it could be one and it wouldn't make any difference in a stock 128. You, there is a project out there that you can expand it, but it actually works by adding another MMU because the thing is the MMU was given this these values, it was given these bits to do this with, but it doesn't have the pins. It doesn't have the actual pins on it to do it. So anyway, that's just that's just we'll just leave that at zero, but it doesn't matter. Bit six is the one that actually controls this. So bit six decides which RAM layer. So zero or one. Okay, didn't write that very well, but that that's the bit that decides which layer of RAM is switched on that you're going to be talking to. Bits four, bits four and five control this, whether whether this chunk of ROM is on or off, and it seems sort of backwards, but zero zero means on and one one means off. Okay. So if it's zero zero, this whole ROM with the kernel ROM and the character ROM and everything is active. And so any reads from this area come out of that. If it's one one, that's off and any reads come from below it in, in RAM. So what about zero one and one zero? They, they have to do with optional ROMs that could be installed in the um, there, there are extra sockets in the 128 that you can put internal, what they call internal function ROM into. You can also plug in an external um, cartridge, which can have a ROM in it, and that, that's called an external function ROM. And those would get mapped into this area, either, either this area or this area, or possibly both, I think. And so these have to do with turning those on and off, but you don't have those in the stock 128. If you're programming for the 128, you're probably not going to have them. You're not going to have any reason to deal with them. Um, and so I'm just going to ignore them. And that makes this whole that makes this simpler to look at. Um, there are some of them do exist. Like Jiffy DOS um, was an internal function ROM that I had in one of my machines, and it gave you it gave you some better disk routines, faster load. Um, faster load routines and simpler commands and stuff like that. Um, but if you're designing Jiffy DOS, then the, the chip itself would take over and do this stuff. So all we have to, all we care about is we either want this on or off. Three and two work together the same way for this block, for the basic ROM high. So again, zero, zero means it's on and one, one means it's off. So that that part of basic can be turned on or off with those two bits. And again, this was a space that a, an internal or external function ROM could be plugged in. And then you would also you could use zero one and one zero to also choose those options. But we're just going to ignore that. And we get to bit one, which controls this block. And again, zero is on one is off. So there was no other choice here. It was just either this thing is on or it's off. Okay. And then you get down to the last bit, which controls the IO block. Zero is on, one is off. And you just have to remember that it's backwards from what it seems like it should be normally in binary. You think in terms of one is on, zero is off. These are just backwards. Um, so zero is on, one is off. So that controls this IO block, whether this IO block is on or not, whether it's active. So 
if it's if this bit is a zero this is on and any reads and writes happening in between d thousand and dfff are happening with the io block if it's a one that's off and you go through either to here either to the character rom or to ram depending on what this is saying about this so these two together control what's happening right here in the d thousand section but you to understand what's going on with the whole total value, you've got to look at it one at a time and say, okay, this is controlling whether this is here, whether this is active, and this is controlling whether this is active. And if this is active, it doesn't matter what this is doing here because anything happens here it goes into the IO block. Okay. So then how do you use this information? Well, with this, you have a lot more choices than just here. And by the way, the reason we don't care about the other bank choices is they have to do with the stuff like the internal and external function ROMs. They also have to do with things like the, the other possible third and fourth banks of RAM that we don't have. So really these in basic, those four are the only ones that matter. So how about an assembly then? Well, we have to look at our values here and decide, okay, what do we want to map in and map out? So let's say we want to just turn everything on like bank 15. Well, you start looking, you say, okay, we'll start with a zero because that, that bit doesn't matter. We want the, we want the first bank of Ram, the first layer of Ram, which is zero. So we'll put a zero there in bit six. We want the kernel ROM on. So that's zero, zero. We want basic on and also basic low on. And we want the IO block on. So all zeros, which is pretty easy to figure out, that's zero, gives you the default bank. And that's why my, at the beginning of my programs, I've had this load A with zero, store A into FF00. Zero, zero. What that's doing is it's saying, okay, take zero, which is this configuration, zeros through all these things, store it in the MMU config register, and that gives you the configuration with all these things turned on. So you have kernel ROM, IO block, basic, and this, this RAM bank underneath it. So that, you know, so that's equivalent of bank 15. But what if you just want to turn basic off? What if you want to keep kernel ROM on and the IO block on, but you just want to turn off basic because you're not writing a basic program, you're writing an assembly language program. And with basic in the way, you only have 16K to work with down here. But if you turn off basic, you're got, you've got 48K. You got three times as much space to work with. So what if we just want to turn off basic? Well, we don't have a, a, a bank command to do that. None of these actually do that, but we can do it by flipping particular bits. So once again, we got to walk through. We'll take our default RAM bank. So we've got a zero and then a zero for that. And then we do, we want the kernel on, so that's zero, zero. But we want basic off, so that's one, one here for basic high, and then a one for basic low to turn that off. But then we want the IO block on, so that's a zero. So in binary, that's our configuration. You turn that into hexadecimal, you get zero E. And so if you store zero E into FF zero, zero, you turn basic off. You still have this stuff on. You still have the same RAM layer, but you turned basic off. And so now you've got all that extra RAM to work with for your program. Um, let's say you want to turn the kernel off too. Um, in fact, let's say you want to get to just a, a pure RAM configuration. You want to turn everything off because you just need to do some calculations. You don't need to do any IO for the moment. You just need a lot of space to do your calculations. So let's turn everything else off and just have pure RAM. You'd have zero, zero, assuming we're using the, the first RAM bank again. Um, you'd have one, one to turn off the kernel. You'd have one, one to turn off basic high, another one to turn off basic low, and a one to turn off the IO block. So that's it in binary. If you turn that into hexadecimal, that's 3F.
So 3F stored into FF00 would give you just RAM with all this, with all the ROM and I.O. stuff turned off. Um, other than this little thing right here, because that's got to be there so you can turn things back on. So that's how you do it. You just have to know which bits, and of course, once you figure these out, you know, your program is probably only going to need one or two different configurations. And once you figure them out, you just have them set and, and off you go. But um, you just have to figure out and think about it in terms of, okay, what do I want on? Do I want basic on? You're probably going to want either both basics on or both basics off, depending on what you're doing. I don't know if you'd ever need one or one without the other. Um, you know, do you want the kernel mapped in? Do you want the IO block mapped in? And then just pick the proper bits to uh, do what you need to do. Um, I think that that fairly well covers it. Um, one thing to mention is down here in the last or the the first, I guess, one k of memory. This is typically shared between layer zero and layer one of RAM. Um, the reason being that, um, so we'll call it, well, we'll call this layer one. So we've got layer zero and layer one, two different blocks of RAM that we can choose, but we have a little bit that's normally shared, at least by default it's shared. You can turn that off. You can also make it a bigger shared area. You can make it shared on this end instead of that end or both ends. You have a lot of different choices, but this is the default. The reason for that is, say your program is running in layer zero and you want to store values over here somewhere in layer one. Well, as soon as you flip from this layer to this layer, your program is gone because now you're in layer one. So you've got to have at least some common memory that you can have a, at least a little bit of code down in here so that when you flip to this one, you still have that code. Your program can keep running. and. The kernel actually has some routines in it that when you start the computer up, it copies those routines down into this area. I think it's in the 200 area, um, which are which are which it uses then if it needs to store values over in the other bank, it can run a little it can run a little code down here that can do that so that when it's switching back and forth between these two layers, the code can keep running because it's in both layers. So there's a shared or shadowed section of memory there, but that doesn't change the, the the basic point that we can only have one or the other at a time. Um, and that's controlled by which, which one we have, which layer we have is controlled by this bit six. Um, I think that's, I think that's probably everything. So um, if you have any questions, ask in the comments, but it basically boils down to figure out what things you want to turn on and off and put that in the configuration register and it happens. Um, and I think that's it. So I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.